How's it going, ladies and gents? This is Boo from Mile High Distilling. I'm gonna let you in on a little secret. Here at Mile High, in our shop, we have a super secret door that leads to an amazing wonderland full of really just ingredients and different parts that either we can't sell or we're keeping for special things. I wanna go ahead and do a little bit of cleaning up in the shop, get that organized. There's a lot of ingredients there that I don't really think has a place there anymore. Why don't we take everything in that room, I don't know what's in there fully, let's take everything we can and just make like a Frankenstein fermentation. I think that sounds fun. What's gonna be really interesting is a lot of these ingredients are pretty freaking old. So I'm curious if that's going to still be able to ferment, if we're gonna get off flavors from that old things, if we're even gonna be able to use the ingredients. Um, I guess we'll find out. Let me take you through a little tour and you're gonna see where this special room is. If there's any Chinese spies watching or any secret competitors of ours, turn off this video now. You're not allowed to watch this. All the rest of you, follow me. All right, guys, let's find this super secret spot. Let's go through this front door here. We gotta take 10 paces in front. And here it is, guys. Can you spot it? This super secret door that is literally marked. It's very dark in here to obviously keep the secrets, but if we look, we're gonna see a few machines some custom projects that are used for videos and things. And bam, we're gonna have some ingredients right there. It looks like some honey and what I'm assuming is agave. Got a nice barrel that maybe we can use, filtering. And then perhaps through one of these boxes here, we'll be able to uh, maybe get some actual raw ingredients that we can use. Let's go ahead, pull everything we can find and get you guys a tally. All right, so check the haul out guys. We're gonna have Oof, who knows how much worth of agave. It's agave syrup, Blue Weber. We're gonna have some honey that's probably almost fossilized and congealed at this point. I found some brewer's sea salt. I don't know what we were even planning for that, but that's gonna be kind of interesting, I think. Here's some yeast nutrient and yeast over here that's just been sitting for, again, who knows how long. We'll see if it even works, but we're gonna try to use that as our yeast starter. Now here's where things get interesting. We also have some beach smoked malt. Looks like about 12 pounds worth. And then we're also gonna have some roasted barley. So, so we're going from like a honey tequila, something like that, with maybe like a little bit of a salt chaser into what now is more like a smoky malt honey tequila. And then I also found a bunch of botanicals so we have some licorice root, some cinnamon sticks, orange, and some coriander seed. So now we've got a gin with uh, some smoky malt and some honey tequila kind of all mixed in together. Uh, is it going to turn out good? Probably not. Are we still going to try it? Yes, we absolutely are. And then I have a barrel which we'll probably finish in. So let's see what we can create through this. So I took the liberty to crush up my grains, get them nice and ground up. This looks like straight up just coffee with that roasted barley. And I also took the liberty of crushing up some of my botanicals. I got, you know, some ratios that I wanted to try, crushed them up uh, just for more surface area so it's gonna come over in the fermentation. Um, while I was doing all that, while I was crushing all these things up, I started thinking, the experimental side of me and the creative side of me wants to throw everything all together in a Frankenstein fermentation and see what we create through that. But then the perfectionist side of me knows it probably won't turn out good and I would also love to create something good out of what we've seen here. So I figured, why not both? This isn't just gonna be a Frankenstein mash episode now. This is also gonna be, we're gonna do some experimental batches that hopefully have a little better results. Now why I'm so unsure about this Frankenstein creation is because look at our ingredients here. There are so many 
powerful ingredients. This smoky malt, this is gonna come through and pretty much like this roasted barley. I mean, are you gonna taste anything else but roasted barley if we add all this? There's no way around it. Coriander seed is so spicy and just like takes over a lot of those like orange peel, subtler type botanicals. I just really don't think we're gonna be able to incorporate all of these ingredients, like the full quantities of each ingredient into one batch and have it really turn out anything other than just overpowered in one flavor profile compared to the others. So we'll definitely have our Frankenstein batch, but I do have a few smaller batches intended that I wanna see how they turn out using smaller quantities of these ingredients. We're gonna have our Frankenstein, which is gonna be made up of coriander seed, licorice root, sweet orange peel, cinnamon sticks, honey, agave, sea salt, beechwood smoked malt, and roasted barley. For the other two recipes, I just took out of this list ingredients that I thought would go well together and just sort of made uh, a little bit of a smaller batch. So we have a spiced smoky malt whiskey, which is gonna be made up of some beechwood smoked malt, a much smaller quantity, a, a little bit of that roasted barley, tiny, tiny bit. And then we're gonna go in with some cinnamon sticks and some sweet orange peel, which always is a good pair. And hopefully get a little bit of that spicy aroma through that smoky malt. We're then also gonna try our hands at sort of like a spiced honey tequila. And that's gonna be made up of agave, honey, sea salt, which I think is gonna be an excellent pair. And then we're gonna throw in some sweet orange peel and just a marginal amount, like very small amount of coriander seed to maybe carry over a little bit of spice into our tequila. So let's go ahead and let's get this triple feature video on the road. Now the first thing we're gonna be looking at doing is cooking our grains. We want those sugars to come over through the grains. Now, typically we do this through a mash tun or some sort of kettle, something like that. But this is a completely experimental recipe and we're going to continue a little further. We're gonna try a new type of cooking method for our grains. And all we're gonna be doing for it is we're gonna put these grains in a bucket and I'm gonna dump boiling hot water over, close that bucket and have them sort of seep in there, almost like a tea. Um, I've done this once before. It seemed to work pretty effectively and I think it'll do us pretty good here. I really get worried when I cook smoked specialty grains. What I've always found is that I never get the right temperature and that I think it either messes with my sugar content or creates a bunch of off flavors from overcooking or a mix of both. So I can't seem to find that right ratio. I think it's around 150 Fahrenheit, but I'm never able to really get a good quality smoked grain when I cook it. Let's try this recipe this way and we'll see if maybe that's a beneficial thing. So right now we have our eight gallon boiler, mile high milk can boiler, heating up with an electric controller. I'm just heating some water in here. My thought with this is, is we're doing our big Frankenstein batch and then we're gonna do a smaller batch with some of that smoky malt. And so I want enough water for both. This is an eight gallon kettle. And remember with grains, they tend to absorb some of the water as they ferment. So we always want to overdo it a little bit on water. Typically, what I do if, if I'm doing a six and a half gallon batch, I'm gonna do about seven and a half to eight gallons of water. And then with my smaller batch, it's gonna be probably about a two gallon batch. And I'd probably do about a gallon and a half worth of water there. Clearly, I can't fit that all in. So I'm just gonna roll with it, I think. What I have in here is seven gallons of water. That's even a little over what we really recommend. Putting in an eight gallon system, usually six and a half is the cap. We're gonna do seven gallons. And then what I think I'll do is uh, do about five and a half in the big batch and one and a half in the small. And uh, just take what I can get out of the Frankenstein batch. If we don't know how it's gonna turn out, I don't really care about volume so much. So we'll pull back on volume, get a little less out of that Frankenstein batch. And uh, if it turns out good, we'll make a bigger batch in the future. But for now, I'm letting that heat up. As it's doing that, let's go ahead and get our fermentation basis set up. Let's go ahead and start with our specialty tequila batch. That's gonna be pretty simple. What we're gonna be using here is gonna be three ounces worth of sweet orange peel. We're gonna be using a quarter ounce worth of coriander seed. And then what I'm gonna end up doing here is we have a 
pretty small amount of honey for between two batches. Uh, I'm probably gonna throw about half in the smaller batch and half in the Frankenstein batch. So we'll do about half a gallon worth of honey. And as far as the agave goes, I think I'm gonna see how much is in there. I'm gonna try to get about a gallon in there. Or not, because it looks like I have about a gallon. Let's do half a gallon in the small batch. Let's go ahead and dump our already mixed and pestled botanicals. And then I'm gonna let this one sit. And then at the end, we're gonna pour water over all these. Let's just get the bases down for now. But we'll top off with water and this one will be done. I do have to say, the smell is absolutely magnificent out of this one. It's uh, maybe like honey bunches of oats with like orange slices in there. Very much like cereal with uh, just uh, some hints of orange. For that tequila to finish off, let's add some sea salt. What it says here on the package instruction is about quarter of an ounce per five gallons. We're working with a two gallon fermentation. I'm just gonna half it entirely. We're gonna do an eighth of an ounce. Let's get a little gourmet here. Now for our whiskey, our smoky malt whiskey, we're going to want obviously our water to boil to finish everything out, but we can go ahead and lay a grain bed down because that water's just going right over. Now the ratio that I think is the best with grains is about three pounds of grain per gallon of solution. However, the number changes completely when we talk about smoked malts. Smoked malts can carry over and be extremely, extremely invasive to all other types of flavors through a malt, especially if it's a full smoky malt, no else, like nothing to calm it down. Uh, there's no reason to go overboard with this. We'll save the overboard for our little monster creation, our Frankenstein. We'll go all out with it here. But in a recipe we're trying to do somewhat right, and hopefully it comes out good, we'll have to be very careful the amount we use of our smoked grains. I think what we're gonna end up doing is, honestly, especially considering the small batch size, let's start with half a pound of beech smoked barley and maybe a quarter pound worth of that roasted barley. That even might be too much, but I guess we'll see. You know what, actually, I think I changed my mind. Normally, that would be the quantities we use. However, this is pretty old, beech smoked barley, and I'm really not getting the, the flavor profile from fresh grains. The toasted barley, absolutely I am. It's insane what it's doing. This, I think we can spare a little bit more and that'll give us a little bit of higher gravity anyway. Let's go ahead and do a pound worth of this. Now we're gonna stick with that quarter pound worth of roasted barley, get it all in there. Now, even though these are correct ratios, this isn't really what you typically do. That three pounds of grain per gallon of water is there for a reason. That's to get us a somewhat decent alcohol content. I'm using a lot less than really what's recommended, and so it's gonna show in my alcohol content. But that's what I'm working with. These are the grains that I had sitting in this closet, and I think it's cheating to use anything else. So we're just gonna deal with the lower percentage yield. Could I drop some honey or agave in here and get up my percentage a little bit? Sure I could but I don't want to split things three ways with those ingredients given the little amount I have. So this is what we're working with. I can't really think of anything that would increase our gravity. That's at my disposal right now. I don't have sugar right now, um, so I can't really boost anything. What I see is what I get. So we're gonna finish up this portion of the recipe for our smoky malt by adding three ounces worth of orange peel and two cinnamon sticks crushed up. That second base done. Now I definitely want to wait for that water to come over uh, to hopefully dilute this because what's coming out smell wise is interesting. You definitely get orange and you get like a nice woodsy smoke there. I'm already a little worried that the ingredients that I've used are going to not complement each other well. And I think just from smell alone, it seems like it's a mix of just ashy wood and uh, hints of, you know, spice. So it could work together, we don't know. All 
Ah, see, now that's better. That's more consistent. So you definitely get that roasted coffee smell from this fermentation, but it's a lot less like uh, in your nose. And then you're also getting that orange coming through, as well as I am actually able to sense that there is some other type of grain other than roasted barley in this one, which is good. We did add that beechwood smoke, and it's a uh, beechwood smoke to me is like sort of biscuity, um, you know, maybe a little bit caramelly. I don't know if that's just kind of how my nose works, but I'm able to get some of that over, which is nice. So I think this is much more of a blend, and uh, this one should be pretty interesting. Now for our big batch, I'm gonna go ahead and start with some agave, half a gallon worth, and the rest of that honey, about half a gallon worth. Ooh, that age, that honey is starting to show. I'll probably use some of this hot water and uh, get that honey a little bit dissolved before I try to get in the rest. That's probably the smartest move. Let's go ahead and switch to some grains. Now while we wait for that honey to melt with our boiling water, let's dump in our grains. And yes, we are using all of this. I don't care how it comes out. Whew. I can already smell the mistake. Man, that's going to be an interesting one. This is going to be made up of half an ounce worth of coriander seed, one ounce worth of licorice root, two and a half ounces of sweet orange peel, two cinnamon sticks crushed up. It smells amazing. I really hope it actually adds to these overpowering grains. The only way I'm really going to be able to do this effectively by myself is by dropping this bucket where the camera can't see it. But at the end, I'll show you what we've got going on. Oh my God, what have I done? <laughs> I've created a monster. I don't know what this is. This is uh, incredibly interesting. <laughs> it's mainly just uh, that roasted barley. It's uh, this burnt notes, um, like burnt popcorn almost, maybe a little bit sweeter than that. Maybe a little like a, just like a finely charred rib or something. That charry, charriness from a barbecue, get a lot of that over and really nothing else. I don't think anything else we added is really going to uh, come over any more than the roasted barley would. I think it will be interesting though. This has like almost some coffee notes. So like a little espresso whiskey, um, something like that doesn't sound too bad. And add in that honey. And you know what? I totally forgot the, uh, the brewer salt. Let's do about a, probably about a quarter ounce worth of that. There's still more of this honey. I don't think I'm gonna be able to get it all. It's too crystallized. Honestly, screw it. It's Frankenstein creation. We're gonna eyeball this. All that we really have to do from here now that our water is in all these is we're gonna let these specifically grain fermentations just sort of simmer and steep with this hot water, this boiling water active. And uh, we're gonna give that just a day or two, let those grains convert as much as they possibly can. And then what we'll do is uh, on a future day, you'll see me wearing a fresh new fit and everything will be cooled down at that point. We'll pitch some yeast and I'm gonna give you guys a few updates. It's gonna be a few weeks for me, but thanks to the magic of YouTube and editing, you'll be able to see sort of the progress throughout these, these, this whole fermentation. So stay tuned. All right, I've had my weekend. I am nice and refreshed and these fermentations got what they needed as well. So we're ready to pitch some yeast. Now let's go ahead and we have to do two things before we continue with our final step. Number one, I wanna give all of these a little bit of a smell test. I wanna see what's come over in the three days they've been fermenting. Well, not fermenting, but sitting, waiting for that yeast. And I wanna see if maybe something is mellowed out in all of them uh, and give you guys some updates, as well as, guys, it's shot time, man, okay? You guys know this. We know what time it is. I think we definitely got to get a little Frankenstein with this shot too. 
These are my two favorite spirits we've ever made here at Mile High Distilling. This is our pineapple brandy that sat under oak for a few months. And then we have our Pinello rum, just super funky. Let's combine them. Let's see what we can create. This is a monster mash. Now, as I pour this, guys, as always, I want to thank you so very much for watching. If you've enjoyed what you've seen so far, please be sure to like this video. Please be sure to subscribe to our channel. And you'll also get additional content just like this, as well as different things uh, all throughout this channel. Down below in that description, you're also going to see all our other social media. We have a bunch of content flying throughout all those. So be sure to also check all those out. And guys, as always, this channel wouldn't be nearly as fun or nearly as thriving if it wasn't for you guys. I just want to say thank you so entirely much for all the compliments I get on the phone and through email and through the YouTube videos. And I really think you guys enjoy these videos and that helps me continue to make fun videos. So thank you very much for spiking creativity and enjoying what you see. And uh, thank you for being here. I don't want to give some long winded cheers here, but I just want to say we just hit 7,000 subscribers, which is a huge landmark for me. I'm really hoping by the end of the year, we can hit 12,000, which is what our old YouTube channel had uh, before it ended up getting basically deleted. And so I'd really love to achieve that goal. If you have the ability to please subscribe to our channel, I would love for y'all to, and I promise we'll make it worth your while. We'll have some really fun experiments like this one. We'll be making some awesome recipes that you guys can follow, and we'll be taking lots of shots in between. So guys, without further ado, thank you very much once again. Get some monster mash type shot, blend some spirits together, and take a shot with me. Thank you guys. Man, the reason these are my two favorite spirits is because both just like explode in your mouth. It tingles every part of your mouth. I just got a double dose and I'm just tingling all over throughout my tongue and the roof of my mouth. I'm probably gonna take one or two more of those off the shot and then let's get to this. I'm joking, we'll get to it right now. As far as our Frankenstein mash is doing, definitely still the prominent ingredient in here is going to be that roasted barley. It's just so strong. There's really nothing I, else I can do about carrying that over more than anything else. However, I will say it seems to have mellowed out quite a bit. Can I smell anything else in this recipe? Absolutely not. But that roasted, that before was hitting me like someone just burnt a huge bag of popcorn in front of my face. Now it's more subtle. And those same coffee notes I was talking about, it's more just like uh, a watered down coffee, if you will, okay? So really not too bad. I'm interested to see what it'll do in fermentation uh, throughout this process. And then I'm also really curious about that distillation, if anything else will really carry over, because we have a lot of ingredients in here. Wow, our small batch smoky malt turned completely. Before it was that roasted barley, you know, but more subtle, unlike this one, it was there. Um, basically, what this one smelled like initially, this one turned into, and what this one is now is like a nice little blend of aroma. This is interesting. What I call it good, no, what I call it bad, no. I think it's just like an interesting creation and I'm excited to see how it turns out. Oh man, that is so terrific. It was definitely pretty subtle before, but you got the, the honey and the agave and then you had those botanicals sort of like, uh, you know, puncturing that nose a little bit. And now it's just like, you almost get more honey than botanicals. There's that definite hint of those botanicals in there, uh, more so with that orange. That was a very small amount of coriander seed and I think coriander seed is more gonna come over in the distillate, but yeah, you get like honey with, with just that uh, orange tanginess, I guess. In an interesting turn of events, I'm gonna go ahead and rate this, still top, but I think I'm gonna take our Frankenstein creation and rate it second out of three. Again, this smoky malt, there's just a, uh, I don't know if the blend we did really worked with each other. I think they kind of compete with each other on terms of what they're bringing to the table in terms of flavor. And I think it all kind of molded together and created sort of just, well, if anything, just a Frankenstein like we were trying to go for anyways. So um, not displeased with it, but yeah, Frankenstein has brought in some interesting characteristics and we're excited to run 
Let's go ahead and add some yeast to these. I think I'm going to use like just a regular uh, neutral sort of yeast. Nothing that's going to change our cogener profile too much or anything like that. I really just want to see what these base ingredients are going to do for me. I don't want the yeast switching up my flavors too much. So probably something like Daddy Dry Active Distiller's Yeast and uh, some nutrient. And then we'll take a, an alcohol reading and see what kind of alcohol we have in these. Now on our Daddy Yeast, we want about a quarter of a teaspoon per gallon of fermentation. As some of you may know, there's about three teaspoons in one tablespoon. So if we do the math there, for six gallons or so, that's one and a half teaspoons, otherwise known as basically just half a tablespoon. The same exact quantity for our nutrient. So let's do half a tablespoon of that. For these small batches, we're gonna be about half a teaspoon. We could also correlate that with one sixth of a tablespoon. And same for our yeast nutrient. Our honey tequila is looking like it's gonna be a pretty potent solution here. Looks like we're looking at 1.110, 1.110, and that's gonna correlate with about almost 15%, 14. So, man, that's gonna be a powerful one. Our grains are definitely down a little bit, 1.030, which translates to about 3%. Definitely making a turn there. Now our Frankenstein creation, I'm gonna guess, I'm gonna guess 9%, let's see. I'd probably call that 1.065, maybe 1.070. That's gonna equate to a little over 5%, about six. No, more like, uh, more like about eight. That one's not gonna be too bad, but again, we'll see what the flavors do. Well, so anyways, guys, I am editing this video, realizing that it's probably gonna be a little too long if we incorporate every little thing I wanted to. So for now, let's call this part one. This is our fermentation of our monster mash, our Frankenstein creation. And in a future video, we'll go ahead and distill this out. Thank you very much for watching, guys, and we will see you next time.